The world is full of unique individuals. It's often said everyone is unique in their own way, but some more than others. The Wasteland is home to many characters that distinguish themselves from the rest, whether that be through their appearances alone, their personality, or their actions. Yes, the Wasteland has borne its fair share of uniqueness in people. It has shaped its inhabitants into something very different than what they used to be all those years ago before the Great War. It's interesting really, seeing the world change for the worse by the beings living in it, and it in turn changing them in a less than ideal fashion. After all, you reap what you sow. Ghouls are a perfect example of that change, but there was one ghoul-like figure who was not only altered in a rather unideal way, but in a way that eventually gave a little bit back to both the planet and those living in it. Harold was a character with many stories to tell and the experiences to back them up. He is also a prime example that even in the wasteland, greener life can be found. Hello everyone, I am Redbeak Raven and welcome to the story of Harold. So sit back and relax, watch and or listen, as we dive into the story of the mutant with a tree growing out of his head. Before the world was engulfed in atomic fire in 2077, a worldwide energy crisis led to great tension between the Earth civilizations. Before long, they were at each other's throats. The European nations battled it out with the Middle East, as did China and the United States. The world was on the verge of a widespread nuclear war, and some correctly predicted this would be the case. However, while some in society believed nuclear annihilation was on the horizon, Many didn't. Around 2054, the United States government officially set a plan in motion to construct a number of underground installations to serve as shelters in the event of a nuclear holocaust. The plan was labelled as Project Safe House, and its goal was to protect thousands of people from nuclear warheads. At least, that was the official publicly known objective. In actuality, the shelters were a part of a series of secret experiments choreographed by the US government, Voltec. A shady corporation that dealt in heavy construction and personal defence was contracted by the government to build the fallout shelters they needed for Project Safe House, the vaults. Thanks to technology at hand, these underground vaults were constructed at a rapid pace, but despite this, it wasn't enough. The true nature of these vaults is far more sinister than the fact that they weren't built to shelter as many people as possible. Both Voltec and the government didn't actually think a nuclear war would occur, and if you aren't aware by now, you may be wondering, why then build these fallout shelters if the government didn't think they were needed? Was it just a peace of mind? A precaution? Well, not exactly. These vaults existed for only one thing. Social experimentation. Many vaults had defined conditions and their inhabitants were meant to consist of pre-selected segments of the American population. For example, Vault 21 was inhabited by only compulsive gamblers, and all disputes were settled with gambling. Vault 101 was built to test a community completely isolated from the outside world, to study the overseer of the vault in such a position. Then there are the vaults we know next to nothing about, apart from the bone-chilling stories and rumours. Vault 29 is a vault where its secrets are yet to be confirmed, and it is believed that here in this vault is where Harold's story more or less begins. Harold was born in 2072, just five years before the Great War. Once the war was in motion, young Harold was locked in a vault, enabling him to survive that terrible event. It's believed that his vault was Vault 29. Hardly anything about Vault 29 is known for certain, but there is an interesting story there from unconfirmed sources. So we can't consider this actual fact, but can we really say history for definite is fact? The experiment for this vault was that it was to be populated by people no more than 16 years old, preferably young children. The vault was said to be managed by an AI computer intelligence known as Zax29. It was designed to raise the children with aid from robotic helpers, and then upon reaching maturity, the youths would be released into a controlled environment, free to rebuild society from the ground up. However, thanks to the efforts of a female human brain known as Diana connected to a powerful computer, the brain took control of Zax, and she raised the children herself. It is said that a tribe known as the Twin Mothers, a once peaceful nature and life respecting people, descended from those that grew up in Vault 29. Unfortunately, it's been reported that they were conquered by Caesar's legion in the second half of the 23rd century. Regardless of what actually happened in Vault 29, it is believed or perhaps 
perhaps assume that Harold left the vault in 2090 at the age of 18. Throughout the wasteland, various communities had already arisen, and Harold spent the next 12 years travelling the waste as a successful merchant. As his merchant career was on the up, so was his reputation in a place known as The Hub, a major trading settlement in Southern California. As an important figure in The Hub, Harold eventually became a caravan boss, but though his career was successful, it came at a high price. He lost a lot of good people thanks to the dangers of the waste. Hostile scavengers and mutants were the primary source of his troubles, and forced him to spend much of his wealth on many hired guards. As the years went on, Harold began to notice the increasing frequency of mutant attacks on his caravans. Frustrated, he financed and joined an expedition to uncover the source of the mutants in 2102. This was possibly one of the first adventuring parties to try and find out where the strange mutants were coming from. Eventually, they tracked the mutants back northwest and found the population source. An old military installation deep in central California called the Mariposa Military Base. On top of what seemed like an endless swarm of mutants, the party had to penetrate the base's defences. A member of the group, Francine, was cut down by the base's security robots. Mark, another member, was sent to the surface and was never seen or heard of again. Upon fighting their way to the deep sections of the base, the party consisted of just Harold and one other person, a doctor from the hub who led the expedition and was just as puzzled about the mutants as Harold was. The Doctor was Richard Gray, also known as Richard Morihue, best known these days as the Master. Little did Harold know, his expedition would be the very beginning of a long and horrifying event known to some as the Unity. A vision of the Masters to forcibly unify humanity by mutating people into different types of mutants using the Forced Evolutionary Virus, or FEV for short. The Master was a horribly mutated Dr. Grey that was the brain behind the mutant army which roamed California in 2161. He was the being that was defeated by the fabled Vault Dweller from Vault 13, who saved the wasteland by destroying both the Master and his plans. Deep within the Mariposa military base, Harold and Grey found large vats filled with the FEV mixture that seemed to be mutating the creatures they were dealing with. Upon arriving at the vat-filled room, a robotic crane crashed into both of them, knocking Harold unconscious and sending Grey flying into one of the FEV vats. Harold eventually awoke outside the base somewhere in the wasteland. Days later, barely clinging to life, a couple of traders found him and brought him back to the hub. At this point, Harold was mutating thanks to something inside Mariposa. He assumed that Richard Gray perished in the base along with Francine, but as we now know well enough, he assumed wrong. Harold's life soon got worse from arriving back at the hub. His mutation horrified both his partners and employees, who then began to abandon him. Eventually, he found himself with barely a bottle cap to flip. The now poor ghoul-like Harold settled in a miserable and poor existence, but by one way or another, he managed to continue on surviving. It wouldn't be until 59 years later in 2161 we'd hear about Harold again. Throughout those years, he remained in the hub as a very old, sick and rambling beggar. He was in fact the oldest person alive in the hub, and carried a heap of past and present knowledge and stories. Information he would happily share to the intrigued wastelander for only a few caps to keep him going. At some point in 2161, Harold came in contact with the Vault Dweller from Vault 13. The old mutant was residing in the Old Town section of the hub, and provided the Vault Dweller with a vast amount of useful information. Information, details about Mariposa, Richard Gray, and some other information regarding a Deathclaw that lived near the hub at the time. Around 2162, following the destruction of the Master and his army, Harold left the hub and began travelling the wasteland once again. At some point between 2161 and 2241, something peculiar happened to the old mutant. A sapling began to grow from his head, but this small tree was unlike any other. Like Harold, it too was unique. Harold's condition, like the regular ghouls of the wasteland, meant he was able to live a longer life than a normal human. But despite appearances, at least to the untrained eye, Harold was no ordinary ghoul. In fact, whether or not he is a ghoul is still subject to debate. Ghouls are the product of mass and or long exposure to radiation. They are the result of such radiation damage, and the more unfortunate ones tend to lose their minds and turn feral. It is believed most, if not all, ghouls suffer from some 
some mental degradation, but many retain enough intelligence to carry on as normal as they can. Harold, however, was special. As time went on, he too lost one or two marbles. Or maybe it was just old age and crankiness. Life in the waste is tough enough for a regular human, never mind a mutant such as him. He was somehow infected with the FEV, but didn't become a super mutant, or worse. And the only radiation he suffered from was that of constant low-level exposure like many in the wasteland do. It is likely some but not complete exposure to the FEV creates a Harold-like mutant, I suppose, but another non gold defining factor of Harold was the tree growing out of his head. Harold began calling the tree Bob, and often joked that his or its name was Herbert. As time went on, the tree grew, but it wouldn't be until in the late 23rd century that it would become a major problem for Harold. We aren't entirely sure what happened to Harold between 2162 and around 2238, but there is another story from unconfirmed sources. It is known that Harold travelled the desolate land of post-war America following his departure from the hub, but one story has him travelling to Carbon, a fairly small community of farmers and Brahmin breeders located in Texas. He then made his way to the ghoul city of Lost in West Texas around 2208. Regardless of whether or not this is fact, Harold eventually found himself in the ghoul town of Gecko in the now New California around 2238. The ghouls and intelligent mutants of the wasteland often find themselves unwelcome in normal or what you could pass as normal human settlements. Gecko was a place where ghouls ended up, rather than just pass through. The town contains an old Poseidon Energy nuclear power plant that as you might expect, seeps radiation, and it is probably the only reason why the ghouls were left alone there. After all, the New California Republic, the democratic federation that seeks to create a world much like the old one, constantly strives to bring more territory and resources under its banner, and I'm sure that had the power plant been safe for human habitation, the two-headed bear would have taken it long before Harold ever got there. Once Harold arrived in Gecko, he couldn't help but notice how carelessly the half-functional power plant was being run. Gecko's leaders were incompetent, but they meant well. By 2241, Harold had taken over the running of the facility and became the sort of mayor of Gecko. Interestingly, finding himself in in the presence of some of the wasteland's important figures, the Chosen One, the grandchild of the fabled Vault 13 dweller also came across the old mutant. Around this time, there was a struggle between the ghouls of Gecko and the human populace of the nearby Vault City, a highly advanced settlement in western Nevada that was established by dwellers from Vault 8. Gecko's power plant's reactor was damaged, therefore leaking radioactive coolant into the region's groundwater. This was affecting the humans in Vault City as they were becoming ill because of this. Both Harold and Vault City's leader, Joanne Lynette, wanted the pollution to stop but for entirely different reasons. Lynette's reason, as you could anticipate, was due to it causing harm to her people. Harold's, however, was that he knew if the spillage didn't stop, Vault City would launch a military offensive against the ghouls. The Chosen One was asked by both communities to resolve the power plant problem, and they did. Once tensions between the two communities died down and the power plant's reactor was no longer a threat, Harold ventured on once again into the wasteland. Things about him cropped up from time to time over the years. The tree growing out of his head had gotten larger, and some rumours even stated there was fruit growing from it. The seeds were apparently quite tough, and rumours were that several Several of them rooted in even the most desolate places of the wasteland. Now another section of Harold's life that comes from unconfirmed sources tells us of his life in the 2250s. Harold may have returned home to not the hub, but Vault 29. Well, not exactly the vault, but those descended from it. The tree growing out of his head apparently developed an unknown disease, and Harold was affected by this himself. He struggled to find anyone willing to help him on his quest for a cure, when eventually he found his way to the Twin Mother's tribe. The tribe took him in and accepted him for what he was. After explaining his situation, the tribal leaders consulted their goddess. Not long after, they gave Harold a liquid to drink. The liquid worked, the tree was cured, and Harold along with it. After denying his offer of aid for the cure, the tribe did allow Harold to pay his respects to the goddess. They took him to a shrine, and there appeared not a goddess, but a projected image of a woman. The woman was supposedly none other than Diana, the brain apparently connected to the Zax AI in Vault 29. 
Regardless of whether or not this actually happened, Harold eventually travelled east, far east actually, all the way to the capital wasteland sometime in the 2250s or 60s. As he was traversing the northern region of Maryland, Harold grew weary and stopped to rest. Over time, Bob the Tree grew larger and larger and began to take its toll on poor Harold. Just when he stopped, he realised that he could no longer move. He was overwhelmed by the growth of the tree and was rooted to the ground. He then became a part of the tree that once became a part of him. He was able to live off the nutrients the tree took in and Harold and Bob were now essentially one and the same. Eventually, Harold and Bob were discovered by some wanderers of the wasteland. It is speculated one called Birch found him and brought others to revel at the sight of the old mutant. Birch looked upon Harold as a god and knew that many people would seek to harm him. And so Birch, along with some others, founded the Tree Minders, a peaceful group of tribals that would protect Harold for as long as they lived. The tribe took to calling him the Great One. And in the years following this, Bob blossomed and spread across the area of which Harold was rooted. Plants grew and thrived in the Vale which was now aptly named Oasis. What was once a barren area not far from what used to be an old mining town became a veil of green and beauty in this dark and miserable place. Animal life such as birds inhabited the area, and thanks to the tree minders, it continued to flourish. Bob eventually took a hold of Harold's internal organs and carried them off into his root system, making it clear that the only way he was leaving Oasis was through death. Harold gained the ability to spread Bob's seeds and cause Oasis to expand further. He was also somehow able to see through the trees that grew around him and use both of these abilities to amuse himself. The tree minders at first kept him going. He reveled in being worshipped as a god and had the tribal sing him songs, do silly dances and other things to keep him entertained. However, it didn't last. After all, being stuck in the same place with the same people worshipping you on a daily basis could drive even the most easily amused insane. Harold became bored with the tree minders and started to lure outsiders to Oasis. The tribe had strange ways and one questionable ceremony had its entertainment value for Harold. In order for outsiders to gain passage through Oasis and see Harold himself, they had to drink a potentially poisonous sap that supposedly cleared their minds and bodies of anything that could harm Harold and Bob. The sap is what drove most wanderers away. Some that drunk it went mad. Others awoke from being unconscious after taking the sap to see Harold and flee from what most would consider a talking tree. But as you now know, that is far from the case. After a couple of decades surrounded by the tree minders, Harold was completely fed up with his predicament and attempted to lure outsiders to Oasis for not just more company, but to solve his problem. Unfortunately, the tree minders' ways pushed out any hope of Harold seeking the outside help he needed. That was until 2077, when the Lone Wanderer came into the equation. The fabled rumour of the capital wasteland that succeeded in making Project Purity a reality, giving the wasteland a constant source of clean water, was seen by Harold approaching Oasis. Rumours of Oasis scattered the waste for many years, and probably after hearing a few themselves, the Lone Wanderer visited the Vale of Green. Harold ordered the tree minders to grant the wanderer passage to him, and eventually the pair met, marking the third time Harold came in contact with one of the more important figures of the wasteland, at least the figures that would go on to save it. He told the wanderer his story and asked for only one favour. He asked them if they would kill him. After being stuck in the same place for decades without the ability to eat, read, sleep or do anything a normal person can do, Harold became immensely depressed and wanted out of this life. He tried to get the tribe to kill him, but his request fell on deaf ears, as they took it as a riddle or a test rather than an actual desire. The only one that would truly listen to him was a young girl named Yu. Harold liked you a lot because she wasn't like the other tree minders. She took what Harold said seriously and not as some other interpretation. But the young girl wasn't enough for him to consider living anymore and so asked the wanderer to end his troubles. But 
There was conflict within the tree minders themselves regarding Harold. Birch, the spiritual leader of the tribe, wanted to keep Harold and Bob's gift contained and left within the confines of Oasis, fearing that should it spread, its destruction would be inevitable. His wife Laurel, however, wanted Bob to spread far and wide, covering the wasteland with this new plant life. She saw this as a gift to the world, a way for a new world to be born and bring life to the wasteland. The Lone Wanderer was left with a dilemma that could potentially have a huge impact on the wasteland in the years to come. Fulfill the wishes of an old and tired mutant, spread the plants across the wasteland in hope of something resembling the old world returning, or leaving Oasis to the small pocket of peace that it is, or perhaps was. What happened? Well, Harold's story is yet to be finalised. It was left to the Lone Wanderer to decide the fate of Harold, Bob and the Oasis of Green that was a welcome sight over the grim view that is the Capital Wasteland. To this day, we don't know for sure what exactly happened. The tree minders kept to themselves and tales of the Lone Wanderer are scattered all over the Capital Wasteland. Some can't even agree on the Wanderer's gender, never mind their deeds. No, it isn't clear what happened in Oasis in 2277. But what is clear, is that for better or worse, Harold was one hell of a unique character, and the Wasteland wouldn't be the same without him.